I think it's really important that we recall how to calculate each type of average and not to be confused between the different methods of calculating an average. And when we're calculating a mean, this is the one average that requires an actual calculation. Now, if I consider the numbers 7, 9, 5, 1, 15, and 5, and I want to find the mean of all those numbers, what I need to do here is I need to add all the numbers up and then divide the total by the number of numbers. So to calculate the mean from this data set, I'm going to add 7 to 9, then I'm going to add 5, then I'm going to add 1, then I'm going to add 15, and then I'm going to add 5, and I'm going to divide all of that by the number of numbers. I can see here I've actually got six numbers. What's really, really important in the exam is that rather than just obtain the answer, that we show clear, concise method work. Because the distribution of the marks gives you method marks for working through parts of a calculation like this. So in this case, when I add 7 to 9, I get 16, then I add 5, I get 21, add the 1, 22, um, 37, when I add the 15, and 37 add 5 is 42. Now it's really important that we actually show clear, concise method work and we say that the mean is 42 divided by 6. Now this may appear on the calculator paper or the non-calculator paper, but we can see quite clearly that 42 divided by 6 gives us an answer of 7. So my mean calculation, when I add up all of the numbers and divide by the number of numbers, that produces a correct answer of 7. If I'm asked to calculate the mode, that's a different form of average as we know. And the crucial thing about the mode is that we have to find the most frequently occurring average. It's the most frequently occurring number. So when I write down the word mode, I like to write down capital M and then I use a capital O as well. And then I write lowercase d and lowercase e. So that my mode is the most common number. I can then just tail off here with most common. It just helps me to remember that the mode is the most common number. And look at my data set here. I've got a 7, a 9, a 5, a 1, a 15, and a 5. And I can see that the number 5 appears twice, so 5 is my mode. So I can write mode is equal to 5. So it's very easy to find, but it has um, disadvantages as well, um, as well as the other averages having advantages and disadvantages. Uh, sometimes there might not be a mode, sometimes there will be two different numbers of the mode, um, but the mode is the most common number in a data set. When I go to calculate the median, it's absolutely crucial that we first uh, rewrite the numbers from smallest to largest. So we rank the data in ascending order from smallest to largest. And I'd be ultra careful to make sure that all the numbers are included. So when I go to calculate the median, I'm going to find the middle number of an ascending series from smallest to largest. I'm looking at my data set here. Um, I've got a 1, um, I've got a 5 and a 5, so I've got the two 5's done there. I've got a 7, a 9, and a 15. Now, with an even number of numbers, what I actually find is there are two numbers that occupy the middle spot. And in this case, I can see that 5 and 7 are both effectively in the middle of this data set. So I need to go in between the 5 and the 7 to get my median value. Now, if I think about finding the average of 5 and 7, I could just simply say 5 out of 7 is 12, 12 divided by 2 is 6. We'll just find the gap between 5 and 7, halve it and add it to the 5. But effectively, exactly midway between 5 and 7 is 6, so my median is equal to 6. So what we've found so far is that the mean is 7, the mode is 5, and the median is 6. The significant aspect about the range is it has to be calculated. I can see that um, the smallest number is 1 and the biggest number is 15. So the definition of the range is the biggest number take away the smallest number. So for this data set I can say the range is equal to 
15, take away 1, and that produces 14. It's a very straightforward question, but some students just put 1 to 15 or 15 to 1 and they don't get the marks. So the crucial thing about the range, we have to calculate it as the biggest number, take away the smallest number. Each of the averages have got, got its own strengths and weaknesses, but for the purpose of the exam, we just need to make sure that we use the right strategy to calculate the right average and we don't get the strategies mixed up in any way. Now sometimes we have data that's put forward in frequency data. So to illustrate this example, I'd like you to imagine, um, say, a hockey team that are looking at the number of goals they've scored in the various games in the season. And the data I'm looking at now says that um, for this particular hockey team, uh, we've got five games where they scored no goals. Uh, there were 12 games where they scored one goal, and they scored two goals on 17 occasions. Um, they scored three goals on 13 occasions, and on three occasions they scored four goals. Now, to work out a mean for frequency data, if we work systematically, it's very, very straightforward. If I call the number of goals x, and I call the number of games, the frequency, just call it f, all I need to do to work out the mean from frequency data is to add an extra line, one, extra column if you will. Um, what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to multiply the number of goals by the number of games in each case. So I'm going to call this my fx column. Now when I multiply 0 times 5, I get nothing. 1 times 12 is 12. 2 times 17 is 34. 3 times 13 is 39. 4 times 3 is 12. So my extra column is crucial to calculating a mean from frequency data. All I now need to do is to add up the total of my fx column and divide it by the number of games. So what I'm now going to do, I'm going to add up my numbers. I've got um, 12, uh, 34, and then I'm going to add 39, then I'm going to add my 12, and that produces 97. I'm looking at the number of games that I've, I've played here. Well, 5 and 12 make 17, another 17 makes um, 34, um, 47, 50. So I've got 50 games here. So my mean from frequency data is just the total of my fx column, so my 97. And I'm dividing that by 50 to work out the average number of goals per game. And if I type in 97 divided by 50, I can see the fractional answer is 97 over 50. That gives me 1.94 goals per game. So I'm not going to round that off in any way. I've been asked to work out the mean number of goals per game. And I can see that my final answer is 97 divided by 50, 1.94. Now the crucial aspect for calculating uh, the mean for frequency data is to add an extra column where we have x and frequency, so we actually multiply the x scores by the frequency. So in this third column we have the fx column, when we add up that fx column, the overall total, and divide it by the total frequency, that gives us the mean from frequency data. And it's a shortcut method rather than writing out all of those numbers individually to calculate uh, the mean from frequency data. So a clear, systematic approach will enable us to find the mean from the data and get the full marks for this question. So this question comes up in the exam. Best of luck from the Collins team.